Good morning. This morning I'm messing about uh, with one of these cheap VFDs. This one is an AT1, one of the bottom end of the market ones. Now these things from China, 70 quid, 80 quid, something like that. A real one from Japan is probably 1200 or 1500 quid. So we can't expect the same level of uh, equipment. This one is quite handy in that you can remove the control panel and fit it remotely and in there there is uh, a few inches of wire so you could probably fit it to the front of your enclosure or you can buy an extension cable. Now somebody pointed out on the internet that in extension cables are incorrectly wired. Uh, wired in reverse. Now I don't know about that but it's something to check if you buy yourself an extension cable or of course you can make your own. Now for no better reason than curiosity I had the back off this uh, control unit and uh, I measured the pot. It's 10k pot so that means you should have a 10k pot for your uh, remote pot if you should fit one. The other thing that I noticed is there are only four LEDs there where there are six <laughs> windows for LEDs in the thing. Um, so whether they don't light up or whether they don't operate in those modes we'll find out later. Now to wire the thing up you, uh, you wire it in this fashion. Earth goes to the earth terminal which isn't marked as earth. Neutral to A1 or L1, uh, live to L2, then the uh, motor wires to UV and W. The motor must be dealt to wired. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which on these three terminals at either end. Now plug it in and hopefully uh, it will light up like this. Uh, it isn't flickering in real life, it's flickering on the camera for some reason. Now it's displaying F for frequency, but the pot's turned right down. So if we turn it up, let's turn it up to around about uh, 50 hertz, which is uh, the normal UK, this is very sensitive, the normal UK uh, supplied uh, frequency. Now what you get by way of instructions is one sheet of A3, uh, which equates to 16 pages of instructions but uh, at least three or four of those are relating to a different model of machine. Uh, the front one is uh, uh, just the uh, outer cover um, this one is just a picture of the control panel so actually you probably only get a dozen if that uh, actual pages of instructions when a uh, real uh, VFD, that is a, an expensive VFD is supplied, it comes with about 50 pages of instructions. So, even though these are in Chinglish, or in this case Chirish, uh, they're very much chobbledygook. But, because I've wired up several of these in the past, I uh, have worked my way around them. Now you need the figures off the uh, motor instruction plate or some idea about them and uh, these things uh, the parameters are all factory set at uh, default settings uh, but with this one I had a look at it uh, it came to me as brand new but uh, supplied by somebody who had bought it and never used it so I don't actually know whether he had figured fiddled about with the settings or whether they, they weren't set to default when they came. So I'll run through them and check all the defaults. First of all we do is we press program and it comes to P000. Now there are three figures there but in the manual there are only two figures so actually it's P00. P00 is the maximum voltage so we press function and that shows us 220 volts. We can change the uh, position of the 
um, figure that to change by pressing the shift key. And when we get onto the one that we want to change, we can go down. This had, that's 120 volts or back up to 220. 220 is the maximum for this particular machine, even though I'm running at 235, but it will have to do. So to set it, we press function and data again. That's the bottom left hand button. And it takes us straight to P01 which is the reference frequency which should be set to 50 Hertz. So the next is P01 which is the reference frequency which should be set at 50 Hertz. So we press function again and it is, it's set at 50 Hertz. So press function again that takes us to P2 which is the intermediate voltage which is 110 or 190 volts. This is the 220 volt system so we set it for 110. There it is at the default uh, setting. Press function again we go to P03 which is the intermediate frequency which is set at 25 Hertz or should be 25 Hertz because that is half the frequency of the uh, full speed. P04 minimum voltage should be set at 0 volts according to the um, default which is correct. P05 frequency no Hertz. P06 maximum operating frequency. The default is 65. I'm going to set it to 100 because this safe this motor could quite safely run at uh, twice its uh, plated speed. Zero. There we are P07. It's the minimum operating frequency which is 0 Hertz. P08 is password, we don't need any of those. The next one which we should set isn't even shown in the manual. It's P025 and 25 is the number of poles of the motor. Now Zero is a two pole motor, one is a four pole motor and two is a six pole motor. P21 is the motor spindle speed at 50 hertz. Now this is a fairly important one to set, the machine will work whatever it's set up, but the machine needs to know the RPM of the motor at 50 Hertz so it can work out for you and display the uh, RPM at any other frequency. So we set it at 1425. It's previously been set for a uh, two-pole motor. Now the last one that we need to set for this motor is the main current overload which I believe is the full working current of the uh, uh, motor. It's set in milliamps and the default is 3000 milliamps or 3 amps. So we get the value of the plate on the motor 1.45 amps thing will work set at uh, 3 amps but there's no point uh, asking the uh, VFD to send it more current than it needs in a, a fault situation. 1.4 I'm going to set it at 1.5 rather than 1.45. And that's the lot. 
The rest of the uh, settings are all advanced settings, but it is worth checking that they're all set at uh, the default. Press the program button again. We set the thing at uh, 50 hertz. Or thereabouts, this is very sensitive. Press run. And the motor starts up. Just out of curiosity, I'll stick a tachometer on it and see how fast it's running. 1400 and a bit, 1425, exactly bang on for it. Now, if the motor is running in the wrong direction for your particular purpose at forward, don't run it in reverse, simply swap over any of the motor to VFD wires, one for another. Just reverse two of them and it reverses the poles of the windings or something and reverses the motor. Simple. You can do it at either end, at the VFD end or at the motor end, it does not matter. Now I've had a fiddle with it and it does seem that this particular machine will not display the RPM. And we've already discovered there is no LED for the RPM setting. Now one thing I've discovered is there doesn't seem to be uh, an earth to the uh, large metal heat sink at the back. And there should be. Uh, so I'm going to put a link between the earth terminal and a, a tapped hole in the corner of the heat sink. Just to be on the safe side. Well, I hope this video helped you, uh, and thank you for watching.